all the no. Everything no. I'm not even gonna look at the equipment. You know, I'll be the first to admit that I probably watch more YouTube than your average person. And one thing I've noticed a lot popping up for me is roasts. Now, we're not talking about roasting copies, which would make the most sense for this channel. I'm talking about roasting gaming setups and streaming setups. And when I see trends like that taking off, I can't help but wonder, how do I copyify this? And the answer came to me in the form of a vision. I should roast your coffee bars. So with that idea, I put out the request on Instagram and y'all delivered. I got about 100 submissions in about 24 hours, so I had to cut them down to about a third, put them into a folder, and then I kind of forgot about them for a week. Then today, I woke up and I had a mocha with my breakfast, I had a Red Bull in the shower, and so needless to say, I chose violence. So let's roast some coffee bars, shall we? First up, the one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is this portafilter. This on the flare. I don't know if this comes with the flare. I don't think it does. It just reminds me of like a Fisher Price toy or like baby's first portafilter. I don't know. It's it doesn't it doesn't hit for me. And then also down here we've got just some loose beans hanging out and getting dusty. Nah, we're just gonna start off with a four out of ten. Now at first glance, this looks pretty nice. It's a clean setup. I would say I'm I'm not mad about it. Um, it looks like we're catching you between fills, even though you clearly aren't lacking for coffee, but it looks like none of these tubes have anything in them. Uh, I have no idea what this thing is. Uh, I'm seeing a square mile sticker, James Hoffman stand, possibly? Well, I don't know. Also, it, generally it's not bad. I just feel like this whole area is like shoved into this corner. So it just strikes me as someone put baby in the corner. Uh, overall, six out of 10. Next up, we have Kate Crispy. Now, Kate Crispy is a chef, so immediately this does strike me as like a back of the house type of setup here. The wire rack, you've got some accoutrement for uh, cooking hanging off here. Um, you know, you gotta keep this bar clean. If you got time to lean, you've got time to clean, and I'm seeing a lot of pucks built up here. I'm seeing a good amount of mess on the tray, and I'm seeing a towel that looks relatively clean. You know, hit that with a little bit of water, give it a little bit of a, a quick swipe. Also, the Breville has a built-in tamper. Why is there a tamp mat? And why does it look like it's been used? I don't know, four out of 10. All right, so straight off the bat, when I'm looking at this bar, the first thing that jumps out to me is how to make the best coffee at home. And I believe that's a James Hoffman book, so possible Hoffman stand, maybe? Um, I'm also curious, is there anything in that book that you can't find even on his YouTube channel for free? I don't know, I'm genuinely curious. The other thing that immediately jumps out to me is the syrups. Now, I'm not gonna downgrade you for having syrups on your bar, it's a pretty common thing, um, but the flavors are what's throwing me off here. I see strawberry, I see some other kind of red fruit flavoring. Um, what are you making with that? Where's the vanilla, where's the hazelnut? I I'm, I'm very curious on that. That just seems like an odd choice, five out of 10. This, this is my nightmare, okay? I like a really clean kitchen counter. You know, of course, having a machine on your counter is fine, but that is, it's too much. Having a full two group dual boiler espresso machine, creating all that heat, taking up all that space, sitting next to the sink. I don't know, there's something about sinks next to espresso machines that just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, I appreciate the commitment, I respect it, but two out of 10. This one is Ethan's Coffee Journal, and this one sort of gives me Little House on the Prairie vibes. Not necessarily in a bad way, it feels like the Midwest somewhere, maybe Indiana. Um, I'm seeing a lot of pictures. I'm seeing this one, just it's kind of an odd juxtaposition. I'm getting a lot of, I mean, I'm kind of a fan of cable management. Um, I think that needs to be addressed. Uh, if not, just put behind here somewhere, I don't know. Um, but it's a capable setup. Uh, Six and a half out of 10. Now this one is just, this is just cheating. All right, this is the same machine I have. You know, I know it's a great machine, but you're cutting off all the extras around for me to kind of get a better idea of what your bar looks like and what you find important around it. Um, it also just strikes me as kind of plain. It looks like any picture you'd find on La Marzocco Homes Instagram. So I would say A plus for machine choice, C minus for creativity, five out of 10. 
All right, this one immediately it screams it's a lie. Okay, this is not how your bar normally looks, although I think this person did say they stage this, obviously. Um, but it strikes me, it just, it smells of Reddit R espresso moderator energy. And I wanna stay far away from this. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nice equipment here. Also, I just never understood the urge of having multiples of the same machine. For some reason that just is beyond me. And the obsession with the MyPressy twists, these little bulbous chaps down here at the bottom, they're fine. But I always find it interesting that people seem to really love them. I've had shot from them, it's fine. But do you need that many? I don't know. I would say two out of 10. All right, this one is just sort of anxiety manifested for me. Uh, and your name is Sleep Well Dawn, but I don't know if you're sleeping that well. This just strikes me as a, as a cluttered brain uh, and it's making my brain hurt. So we're just gonna move on, two out of 10. Now this one is from Bentham Brews, um, which I believe, I think they've posted photos of his on, on LM's Instagram. And that's what this looks like. This looks like it was made specifically for marketing. Um, it just, it strikes me as it's nice. It's a capable thing. I've, I've used both of these pieces of equipment. They're good. Um, the colors are nice. Everything goes together well, but it just feels like it lacks originality. So I would say five out of 10. Ooh. All right. So this one, I love it. It's, it's pretentious, but also in all the right ways. It's everything you need and nothing you don't. And the cost ratio of the $500, manual flare to the four thousand dollars in grinders i think that's the conical calf tech and that is the legome p64 which is a flat burr grinder um that ratio is chef's kiss in my opinion definitely a purist bar um i love everything about it equipment wise i'd say that the only thing really taking it down a notch is going to be the fact that it looks like it's in a hospital room and this very sad looking Charlie Brown Christmas tree down here in the corner. Um, I think eight out of 10. First things first, those are some of the fanciest looking syrup bottles I've ever seen. So at first glance, they look like they would be liquor bottles, but I see sea salt or sea salt caramel. Is that what that says? And hazelnut, um, you know, some classics. Strawberry guy could take some notes from you on this one. Uh, other than that, it kind of is hitting me in this way where it sort of feels both organized and cluttered at the same time, which is taking down your score a little bit. I think this is six out of 10. All right, immediately this one gives me sort of college room dorm vibes. Um, you've got this work pro bench, obviously that's more of like a garage piece of equipment, which seems to be a fairly common thing. Uh, it is hard to find bars for your house like this. so. The options are limited, so I, I get that. Um, I do like the balance of this one though. You've got a conical burr, you've got a flat burr, a pump driven machine, you've got a manual machine, you've got all the little accoutrements that you would need. Um, it does feel like something's missing though. I mean, there's no natural light. There's not a whole lot to look at and experience around it, but birds are vampires, so eight out of 10. All right, first glance, it's a nice little setup. It's clean, it's simple. Um, it seems to fit the room fairly well. You've got your espresso, you've got your filter. Um, the only two things that jump out at me is kind of odd is, you know, the art choice is coffee labels. It seems just a little too on the nose for your coffee bar area. I tend to like coffee bar areas to not necessarily have coffee art. And also, I'm not a green thumb. I don't have house plants because I tend to kill them or my cat tends to eat them but I can't imagine they love being on top of a hot espresso machine, but I could be wrong. Six out of 10? Oh, all right. Um, I feel like I need sunglasses to look at this one. Chrome is just, it's too much. It's too intense for me, um, especially in a room with a lot of light. This one isn't so bad. There's not like sun bouncing off of it and blinding me, but it's still not my favorite. I'm not gonna take points off for that specifically though. What I will take points off for is it feels very staged. Like why is your niche turned to the camera? It's, it sort of feels kind of odd. Um, definitely feels like it was very recently cleaned. If you keep it like that all the time, good on ya. I like this, I honestly like this countertop and this kitchen looks very nice. I, I Again, I don't like machines next to sinks, but 
it's got a little bit of distance, so there is that. But I keep going back to this niche being angled. It's a little unsettling, so three out of 10. All right, so first thing I noticed right off the bat here is points off for having two flatbird grinders. I think if you're gonna have two grinders and if you're gonna go hard like that, you should definitely have a flapper and a conical. That's just my point on that. Also, two of the most annoying sounding pieces of coffee equipment out there right now. The EK43 sounds like an airplane taking off. I can't imagine having that in my house. And the decent, the little bubbling chirping noises it makes during brewing, don't love that either. But regardless, outside of those things, um, I will say it's a very capable setup. You obviously have filter and espresso, um, a window with natural light, a nice looking bar, it's clean, it's organized, there's a porta filter there, ready to be used. Um, seven out of 10. First thing my eye gets drawn to is this stack of coffee bags down here in the corner. Um, my guess is you got those on Etsy or from a local roaster and you think you're gonna do something with them and they're gonna sit there for years and then you're gonna throw them away when you move. Ask me how I know. Go on, ask me. Overall though, it's decently organized. It is a little chaotic feeling with the open shelving like that and all those pieces of equipment in there. Um, but the Bianca slaps, the Legome and the Niche are both quality grinders. I think you should get a flapper in there to go with one of your conicals, but that's just, again, my personal preferences. Um, I would say this is a solid six out of 10. All right, this is actually another very nice one. So as I mentioned before, I love natural light. I love uh, the overall balance of this bar is great because you've got your conical and your flapper grinder. You've got your espresso machine. Um, nothing really jumps out to me as incredibly roast worthy. I will say there's a little bit of judgment happening when you put stickers on the side of your machine. I don't know why you would do that, but otherwise, not a whole lot of roast worthy things inside this photo. Um, I will give this one eight and a half out of 10. Much like the previous one, you've got all the right pieces of the puzzle, right? You've got the right equipment. Um, I don't see a conical burr grinder, but you don't have to have two grinders. It's a little excessive. Even I agree with that. Um, but you've got a nice machine. You've got your nice grinder. You've got a, a, uh, puck press, I believe that is, and not a whole lot to complain about here. I think the only thing that sort of takes away from this for me is the little menu board thing up here. I just don't love that. Personally, it kind of strikes me as a little cheesy, um, a little too much for home. Uh, I would give this bar six and a half out of 10. I, this appeals to me a lot, and I know I've said I don't love the sound of the decent, and I'll stand by that all the way to the very end, but the way this bar is clean, simple, there's very few things on it, there's not a whole lot of clutter here, you've got what I assume is the conical cafetech, you've got the flat cafetech, you've got a machine that can basically do anything you want, you've got the difference, you've got the natural light, you've got the different textures of the brick, you've got the wood grain in this, you've got the wood grain here, you've got the plant, all this stuff, all very nice. I gotta be honest with you, one of the best, if not the best one I've seen today, nine and a half out of 10. All the no, everything no. I'm not even gonna look at the equipment. This light alone is giving me a headache. I can't imagine having that on ever. It reminds me of the episode of Seinfeld with Kenny Rogers Roasters. <laughs> What's going on in there? What? One out of 10. This one immediately screams to me. I went to Italy on vacation. I had an amazing shot of espresso and I'm trying to recreate it. And I only drink dark roast and only Italians do it right. Uh, this is a Linea Classic One Group. It's rare, it's classic for a reason, but it's also one of the first machines I ever learned on, as well as this large Mazer over here. Um, Lots of points for nostalgia, for real. The only time I'm gonna dock you is just for your losing space on the counter, but overall, I'd be happy with this. Eight out of 10. Last but not least, this is a nice clean setup. I, I'm liking the dark wood. Uh, it seems to match the handle on the porta filter and maybe also the WDT tool. Um, overall, just a very nice clean setup. 
Uh, I like the art. The art doesn't scream copy is the only thing I talk about. Uh, I also think just the, the hooks are nice. The overall vibe is very nice. Um, I don't love the Edison bulbs. They're a little trendy for my taste, but the lighting is very nice here. It's just a cozy little warm spot. Would be happy to brew here eight out of 10. And on that surprisingly positive end note, I think it's time we start wrapping this one up and pass the conversation as always on to you. What are your thoughts on this video? Do you wanna see an episode two of me roasting your coffee bars? Of course, a big thank you to everyone who submitted. Um, and this is all in good fun. So hopefully no one took it too seriously. And a big congrats to another coffee for his incredibly high 9.5 out of 10 on the Spro scale, which is a new thing, I guess I'm saying. And um, yeah. If you have any other ideas for fun, unique coffee videos, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section down below, along with any other questions or comments you may have. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a channel member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.